Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So, I'm still in my pyjamas. It's 7.30 in the morning here. I just woke up. I wanted to time to do like a full day of filming YouTube, so I thought I'll get up super early and then film like two or three videos in a day and then that will last me for like a week or two weeks. No, it'll last me for like a long time basically. And that's what I wanted to do because I was just like, if I do it all in one day, then I can chill for that day. So I got up super early. I know 7.30 is not early to some people, but it's early to me. I normally only see one 7.30 and that's PM, not AM. So we're really doing something right here. But you see by the title of today's video, we're gonna be doing like my ultimate catfish glam. How I literally turned myself from a baked potato into the last woman on earth. Like I literally, turn myself into a woman. So, well, a drag queen woman. When I say a woman, I don't mean like a, a woman walking down the street or your average Sally out there. No, I mean like this heightened, glamorous, all the things that you use to describe like a fierce drag queen, like a glamazon, fierce, work bitch, all that stuff. That's what we're gonna be transforming ourselves into. Um, and I'm really gonna be showing you how to use what you have to best emphasize yourself and to create the best convincing drag look, so to speak. Because I think a lot of the time drag queens work against what they naturally have and it always doesn't read that well. So I'm gonna show you that you can work with what you have and emphasize that to become the best possible version of yourself. So yeah, if you wanna see how this turns out, then keep on watching. So the little humming noise, which you can hear in the background, is my fan. I just have to have it on just to keep my room cool because it is really hot outside and hot under these lights. So we'll ignore that. But we're gonna jump straight into skin prep. And this is actually a new product, which I'm really excited to try. And it's the Peach and Lily Pure Beam Lux Oil and it's designed to replenish and rebalance the skin. And I love an oil as a makeup base. So I'm gonna put this on first and then we'll do another primer on top. And you all know for primer, we're gonna use the Milk Hydro Grip. It's my favorite primer, so sticky, and it literally makes my makeup last four hours. Gonna do two pumps. One, two, massage into my fingers like so. Get it nice and warm. So foundation, ugh. So for foundation, I'm gonna use my normal method, which is a super creamy one, and then buff it in using one that sets down a little bit matte. And for me, that just gives me the most beautiful coverage, but it also makes my skin not look super cakey and heavy, which I know you're all thinking, two foundations later, it's gonna look cakey. It doesn't, trust me. Just use this where you need it, buff in with a, one that dries down a little bit matte, and just watch the magic happen. So disclaimer, before anyone tries to come for me in the comments, to achieve the transformation that I like to do, I like to sculpt my face with highlighting. So for me to do that, I go a little bit darker with my foundation to then lighten it back up with concealer. So at first glance, when I start putting on my foundation and my contour, you're gonna be like, girl, that's not your color. But at the end, when my makeup is complete, you'll be like, oh, it literally looks like your skin tone. So just wait till the end before you pop off in the comments because I know what I'm doing. And I am just gonna buff that in a little bit first with a flat top kabuki brush like this. And this is just the F80 flat kabuki from Sigma. I find that this one is more olive toned, so it takes out the orange tones of this one. You see the difference? Okay, so the next step is cream contour, and I'm gonna use the Huda Beauty Tantor. This is like one of my favorite cream contour products. So instead of drawing lines on my face, I like to get the product like this, and then I'll just pat my brush into it so it picks up a nice amount. And then I'll slowly just start to buff it into my cheeks. Now, because I have a rounder face, I'm keeping all the product here in the perimeter to really try and like narrow my face and like 
shrink it down a little bit. As well, if you put too much contour in this area, it can actually make you look more masculine and like hollow your face out. Then if you want to be like extra and really sculpt your face, can you just see here where I've mapped out? This is like a really gray base contour and this will give you so much shadow and depth. And all I've done is gone literally under my cheekbone, in my temple, around my jaw, and then everyone always says like, how do you get your chin so pointy? By doing this V shape here, it helps to bring all my con like my chin to a point. Then when I highlight, it really makes it be like, like straight down if that makes sense. And then instead of buffing it everywhere, I just literally tap the brush on top of where I've put the product and I don't move it. And can you just see how it just stays put, but it just blends out really easily? Can you see that? And that will just give you so much depth that then when you go in with powder contour, it really will just look like you are like skinny. Now, I use two concealers. I use a light one and then I use like a super light one. I go in with this tart shape tape first and I kind of map out my areas and all my highlights. Then I go back over the top with the Jouer one in key areas to really brighten up like the, cent like the center of my face. And I go nice and vertical here, like literally so steep to really lift. And to make sure that you don't lose any coverage, put a little bit of your concealer on the back of your hand, blend that into your hand with your sponge, so then your sponge will pick up all the product, and then when you blend in, your sponge will not absorb any product. And then just start on the edge here, and just melt that in all the way up. Can you see like that? And then we can spread this out to here. Okay, so this next step is just for people who like that super bright center of their face. But I'm gonna take the Jouer concealer in the shade Snow, and I'm gonna pop that here. And now I'm gonna buff that in with a PC21, which is a smaller version of the brush that we use for contour. And the same again, I'm just picking up some of the concealer on the brush first and then that way it doesn't pick up any product. So I do like using a cream blush in like when my foundation's wet. So I'm just gonna use the Paul and Joe 01, like, and it's just like a gel blush. And I'm just gonna pick it up on my sponge and just put it here in like this little C shape here like that. So I've just zoomed you in, my eyebrows are already done. I'll do a dedicated video for everybody who's asking me to do them. But now I'm gonna move on to eyeshadow and I'm gonna be using my favorite neutral palette and it's the Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam Palette. It looks like this on the outside, this on the inside, and it's just this beautiful, warm, neutral palette. So the eye look I wanna do is like really severely like winged out and super smoky. So instead of like doing that freehand, I'm just gonna put down a little bit of tape and this is just gonna help as like a guideline. So I'm gonna get a piece of tape about this long and I wanna put it in line with my lash line, my lower lash line, up and out towards the brow like that. So now I'm gonna prime my lid using the P. Louise eyeshadow base in the shade 01. And instead of like putting it on the back of my lid like I normally do, I'm gonna pick up little amounts on this fluffy brush and just pat it in gently, just so that I can really build up the right amount because I don't want my eyelid to be super caked up because I want this eye to be really fresh. Okay, step number one, I'm gonna use the P. Louise base in Rumor 06, and as you can see, it's like this deeper brown color. So instead of just going in with the brown shadows onto this, if I put down a little base, it will just help build the depth up for me and I won't have to do as much work. So now I'm just taking the shade Cypress Umbra on this little packer brush and I'm gonna start building up the outer V and then this inner corner here and then I'm gonna leave this area free. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of burnt orange to really diffuse out this inner corner and bring the shadow into my nose contour a little bit. So the eye is more or less like what I want it to be. I'm just gonna deepen up this outer V here with some black. So 
So can you see now how I've like built it up here and here and then the middle is kind of like left free. So now we're going to build up like an intense shimmer around here and I'm going to use the Doll Beauty Like a Diamond Highlighter and I'm going to take on a little fluffy brush like this and then I can really pinpoint where I want it to glow. Now I'm going to take Blank Canvas which is one of the Acid Rain paints and these ones dry down matte so you don't really have to set them and then I'm going to pat this all on the lid. And now I'm going to take the shade Sienna and just pat this onto my lid to add some warm tones back in. And then I'm going to put orange soda on the lid. And then on here, I'm going to put the shade Tempura. So now I think we can remove the tape. <laughs> I mean, it did literally remove all my makeup here, but I'll just patch that up now. So now I'm just gonna take my Morphe Gel Liner in the shade Jet and an Anastasia 7B brush and do an eyeliner. Now I really wanna keep my eye open, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of smokiness in this portion here just to define the lower lashes but not to do it on like the full lower lash line so my eyes are done and can you see now how they're like really starting to pull out and up that's because we use the tape and then we positioned like all the eyeshadow here to really like pull back but now we're going to move on to powder one of my favorite powders is the charlotte tilbury magic powder in the shade number one and it's just a really nice pink tone an aggressive pink tone powder yeah like a lot of people don't really like baking but i i don't like hmm, you know, well i do <laughs> If I'm wearing like heavy makeup like this, like I like to, I like to just make sure it's all set down really well. Um, sometimes I don't set it. I used to go for a stage where I didn't set it and then I was back in a stage where I do set it all the time, but you get the idea. So for bronzer, I'm gonna use a Sunstalker bronzer by Fenty Beauty in the shade Shady Biz. And it's just this like nice warm bronzing powder. And I'm basically gonna put this in between where I would contour and where I would highlight to really help transition everything together. Now to contour, I'm going to use the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow and it's just like this powder here. Now it says Bronze and Glow but I think this works really well as a contour and I'm just going to put it on my temples here, under my cheekbones, along my jaw and really start to sculpt in that chin to make it nice and pointy. And I'm kind of like putting my product here and then circling it around like this to kind of help give me some lift, if that makes sense. And it's such a good subtle shade that I don't feel that like, like you have to go really heavy with it for it to mess up, otherwise it just looks so flawless. You know what I mean? Like it just blends in so well. Okay, the next step is like an extra step, which you don't have to do, but it's something that I always do and I love it. It's like my, one of my favorite products. And it's the Kevin Aquan Light Sculpt Powder. You can see, like, I'm at Pan. It's my favorite powder that just makes you look so sculpted without actually looking like you're wearing a dark gray contour. So I just pick it up on, like, the round end of the brush and just put it right here underneath. Oh, my God. Can you see it? Oh, my God. This powder is just, like, heaven. And that's it. I just put it right in that little dip there. I'm gonna put it here. If you know me, you know I cannot live without 
an orange tone blush. And my favorite blush of like all time is the Anastasia Peachy Love Blush Trio. And it's for these two colors here. So what I do is I take the bright orange shade first, which is this one. And then I'm gonna pop this everywhere. And then I'm gonna use the dark one and sculpt with that. Oh my God, look at that. Mm. 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 And then I'm gonna take the darker shade and put that here. So I've just brushed off my back. I'm gonna go in with the sharp, no, the Kim K W Beauty number one brightening powder on a little tapered brush like this. And I'm just gonna pick it up and then use it to brighten right here. And what that's gonna do is it's just gonna make everything look super bright and super amazing. And then when you take a picture, it'll bounce the light back and you'll just look like <laughs> So I'm gonna do my setting spray before I do my eyebrows. And this is just so that everything can kind of melt together. And then when I apply the highlighter, it will just glide onto the skin better. And I'm gonna be using the Fenty Beauty What It Do Refreshing Mist. I like this one because it's so fine that you can get like really close to the skin and it doesn't drench you and you can just feel your skin go and like drink it all in so yeah. So my favourite nude lipstick is the Kim KW from Charlotte Tilbury and it's just this beautiful peachy nude and I just think it goes with like every single look. It's like honestly my favourite lipstick. For highlighter, I'm gonna go in with the Pure Pearl from Becca, and it's just this beautiful kind of like pinky sheen. And I'm gonna use my blush brush, and I'm gonna slightly just dig into it, just like rub my brush, and just kind of like pat it on the apples of my cheeks like this. Can you see, it just gives like a beautiful sheen. Cause you don't wanna spend all that time sculpting and then just stick like a big line of highlighter on and then it just ruins everything. So, on the apples of my cheeks, like this. Oh my God, look at that. Oh, look at my cheeks. And there you have it. I'm gonna quickly go off camera, add some finishing touches, and then I'll be back with a final look. And here's the finished makeup look. I have lipstick on my Invisaligns. We're not gonna say anything about it, so shh, don't wanna see nothing in the comments. I can't clean my Invisaligns until I take them out, and I can't take them out without ruining my lipstick, so they're staying in until I'm out of drag. So y'all better not say anything in the comments, because I see y'all getting shady in those comments. But here's the finished makeup look. I just chucked on two pairs of my Ellis Times Ardell Lash, chucked on my wig, which is by Crystal Collection. Well, it was made by Blair St. Clair, and Crystal Collection coloured it for me and added in the roots. These are my four pounds AliExpress earrings. They're my favourite earrings in the world. I wear them all the time because they're like ugh, my favourite earrings. But the question of the day is, am I or am I not a professional catfish? You saw me at the beginning of the video looking like Mr. Potato Head and now you see me at the end looking like J-Lo the Potato Head. How do I do it? Professional catfish, that's how I do it. But now, like, you know, I think it's crazy. Like, I've been doing drag six years today. And even now, when I look in the mirrors when I'm filming and I see myself in drag, it's still so crazy to think that, that I look like this in drag. Like, it's so weird still. Like, I still, like, I'm always like, oh, oh, bitch, oh. But yeah, I'm a professional catfish, basically, is what I'm trying to say. And this, is, this whole video was just to highlight how my catfishing skills have progressed severely over the last six years. But... On another note, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who has been watching, subscribing, liking my videos because in the last two and a half weeks we've great gained like 3,000 subscribers, which is totally crazy and y'all have been really enjoying my content. I've been replying to all the comments and seeing you all and saying that the, I'm helping cure the boredom, which is exactly why I wanted to redo my YouTube channel and get some content I was to help you all with your boredom because of 
quarantine, etc. So that's a huge winner for me. And another fun thing that I'm going to be doing at the end of every video from now on, so starting next week, I'm going to be sharing one person's Instagram and a few of their looks from that Instagram at the end of every YouTube video. And this is basically my way of saying thank you for supporting me, thank you for watching my videos, and basically thank you for just being a follower of mine and supporting what I do. And all you have to do to be with a chance of being shared is recreate or get inspired by one of my looks on Instagram, whether it's from Glow Up or it's from a, an old Instagram post, whatever, just get inspired, tag me on Instagram and every video I will be picking someone new to show off at the end of the channel, at the end of the video so we can all support you and give you a little bit of love and just say thank you for recreating and supporting my channel. But I guess that's it. So don't forget to like the video, like the video, subscribe to my channel, let me know in the comments down below what else you want me to see. And yeah, I guess that's it for today's video. So until then, I'll see you on the next one. See ya.